One of the great things about being on this journey with you to become a better pet parent and the journey I'm on to be a an exceptional pet health coach to you and anyone who needs it is learning new things. And in today's case, relearning something that I thought I knew that, by the way, most people in the healthy pet space thought we knew, getting new data and relearning something that now we know isn't exactly as true as we thought it was. What am I talking about? Well, before I tell you what I'm talking about, I just want to be completely upfront, honest, open. One of the great things about being a human is being able to learn, being able to learn new things, being able to implement those things that we learn. And one of the probably not so great things about being human is that it can really set be very, very hard and kind of set us back. And in some cases, damage our egos when we are confronted with information that doesn't align with prior information that we had. That can be really difficult. I really struggle with this just like everybody else. But when it comes to my pets, I do my absolute best to have an attitude of openness, to to want to learn new things, even if what I'm learning contradicts something I thought I knew, because I want to be the best pet parent I can be. So yeah, sometimes it can be hard to get new information that completely contradicts information that I've had in the past. So that's what today's episode is really about. Something that I have recently learned that a lot of people in the pet health space, healthy pet space, (laughs) have recently learned because data, real actual scientific data is finally being given to us. What am I talking about? None other than HPP or high pressure pasteurization. So I did an episode back in October of 2022, and it was like an episode that we had multi, like multiple things in the episode. And one of those things was HPP. Well, before I tell you too much about it, let's roll the intro and then I'll explain exactly what's going on in the healthy pet space, why my mind is being changed around HPP. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Okay, so yes, I published a podcast episode in October 2022. One of the topics of that episode was HPP and why that is, it's no longer truly raw once you HPP the product. Now, that information is something that I thought I knew, that many of us thought we knew, and the information that I brought to you was directly from Dr. Will Falconer. And it's very, like that information that I was basing my belief off of very, very detailed. He is an incredible veterinarian, um, currently retired, but teaching people online. So while that was all good information at the time, we now have new data, new information emerging. And Yes, I got this information from none other than Billy Hochman, who was on a previous episode, probably last week, depending on when this episode airs. It's really, really incredible. Steve's Real Food is actually who is who has been conducting the research. They're aggregating a lot of the information for the raw food community and Let's just go into it because HPP, high pressure pasteurization, basically, let me just give you an overview of if you if you haven't gone back to listen to that episode, if you haven't heard it before, where I talk about HPP is not really raw. 
the idea there is that the pressure is so great that is being put on this food in order to kill the bad bacteria in it. It's also killing the good bacteria in it. And as such, no bacteria, no living organisms. It's not really raw anymore. That's kind of the point of feeding raw is to get all of these wonderful live active bacteria, the good guys, and everything is yin and yang, right? So we have to have a little bit of bad. Otherwise, the, the, there's just no point in all of the good. If we're 100% good, we're out of balance. If we're 100% bad, we have to have a little bit of eat. We have to have, hopefully, a lot more good and a little bit of bad, right? If that makes sense. So now we have new information. And I am going to link in the show notes two different things. One, the post on Facebook that Green Juju put up and also the video. So I'll put the Facebook and the YouTube link for the video where Kelly and Billy from Green Juju present this information so that you can go back and listen to it. But I want to just give you like a brief summary overview of what this new information is and how it has changed my mind to high pressure pasteurization in raw dog and cat food. Today's episode is brought to you by the Furry Family Coach Dog Training. Train your dog in the comfort of your own home and on your schedule with video instruction from me. Learn the foundations of training, teach basic cues to your dog, and explore solutions to behavioral issues all inside of this video-based online training course. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to see you on the inside. The Facebook post that Green Juju put up says, thanks to everyone who watched our special Green Juju Live, where we broke down the science behind HPP high pressure processing. If you missed it, swipe through to see the reality behind some of the most common HPP myths. When done correctly, HPP can be a great food safety protocol while retaining the vitamins and nutrients, as well as the healthy fats and bacteria for our pets' diets. So... Here are some of the myths and then truths based on the new data that we have. Myth, HPP significantly reduces the nutrients in food. Apparently, we now know that this is false. So the fact is when raw pet food is HPP'd, on average, 67% of the nutrients actually increase. So this is why I'm going to I'm going to give you the explanation that green juju has but this is why i've linked the video where billy is explaining it because he can explain things like no other he is excellent at taking really really difficult concepts and breaking them down to where everyone can understand them so uh only four nutrients vitamin a panathenic acid pyridoxin and vitamin b12 decrease by greater than 20%. All of those nutrient levels can be corrected through formulation. All other nutrients remain as at the same levels as non-HPP foods. And this is um, sourced from internal and external third-party testing by Steve's Real Food. But what does that mean to me and you as a layperson? That means that when a food is HPP, like Steve's Real Food is, like Primal Pet Food is, like, um, oh, off the top of my head, Northwest Naturals. There there are quite a few uh, that are using HPP processing in their food. There are four nutrients that are actually decreased by the process of high-pressure processing or pasteurization or whatever it is you, you there are like four different things that it's uh, short for. Vitamin A, panathenic acid, pyridoxin, and vitamin B12. So for you and me, that means that that manufacturer has to know that these four nutrients, these four um, nutrients are decreased through the process of HPP. 
What does that mean? That means that they have to know that and they have to allow for that so that at the end of the HPP process, we are still meeting minimum requirements. So they would have to actually add in a lot more to kind of overcome what is being lost through the HPP process. So to me, a company like Steve's Real Food, who knows this, who has the data, they are then going to be able to do it right so that when that product comes out of the HPP processing, it is still meeting the uh, nu nutrient requirements that they are stating they are providing to your pet. So a on the flip side, a company who may not have this data or may not know this information may not be allowing for this. So that is the one caveat here. And we'll talk about that a little bit later because I want to get through the other three myths. Myth number two, HPP kills all the bacteria in the food, including the good ones, making the food sterile. The fact is studies show that lactobacillus bacteria only have a slight log reduction, meaning they are still active. A second study using yogurt cultures showed they were still active after the HPP process. This sheds new light on the idea that HPP foods are sterile, which they are not. So this kind of also is a double-edged sword, right? Because on the one hand, these companies are using HPP processing because the FDA has a zero tolerance for bacteria in raw food specifically. They have a huge tolerance in it for kibble foods, but that's beside the point. Now, the, the double-edged sword here is that one, for those of us who have not been fans of HPP processing because the understanding was that it killed everything, good and bad, which is why they were using it to meet the FDA requirements. Well, now that's not actually true. So we can kind of breathe a little bit easier about that. On the other hand, if the FDA realizes that it's not doing what they thought it was doing, we might see some not so great things happening between the FDA and our raw pet food companies. That's my take. The third myth is that HPP denatures enzymes. Fact, enzyme activity is not decreased in any significant way by HPP. At the pressure and temperature level used in raw pet food, there was only a 10% reduction in enzyme activity in one study and no reduction in a second study. Both of these studies give us a clear picture about the abundant raw enzyme activity in HPP foods. So this is also internal and external third-party testing by Steve's Real Food. And I, I, it looks like they also posted that, it, like they created an online um, research article was posted in the Wiley Online Library as well. So all of that can be found through the links um, to the Green Juju posts. Okay, so here is the fourth myth, final one for today. HPP oxidizes fats, making them rancid. Fact, fats only show oxidation at pressure hold times of greater than 20 minutes. Al alternatively, fat oxidation can occur at temperatures of 75 degrees or more during the HPP process. Raw pet foods have a pressure hold time of two minutes and a much lower water temperature. They experience minimal to no oxidation. The fats remain healthy and raw. And this is from a Science Direct article. Um, it looks like in October of 2010. So, okay, let's kind of go back and unpack all of this now that I've gone through and like read the slides for you. HPP does not significantly reduce the nutrients in food. Again, let's kind of go back to there are four nutrients that are decreased by greater than 20%. So if I were to feed an HPP food to my dog or cat, knowing this, I would contact the company, make sure they are allowing 
for these decreases during the HPP processing and adding more at the beginning so that at the end of the process, we are still left with at least the minimum levels that are being sold to us, basically. So that would be like my caveat there. And in, in, in a case of green juju, who their freeze-dried meat treats are HPP'd because they have this information and this knowledge ahead of time, they can allow for it. And also with Steve's Real Food, because they're the one, they're the ones doing all the data processing um, and kind of aggregating all of this data, allow for it and make sure that that end product meets what is being sold to you. Um, killing all the bacteria in the food, as I said, it is not, we now know. Um, and I actually neglected to mention what that source was. Um, it's from hyperbaric.com. Uh, and that link is in the Facebook post. So uh, now knowing that it's not actually killing all of the bacteria, be it good or bad, like I said before, that is a bit of a double-edged sword. Hopefully we don't see any like pushback from the FDA, but it, it's, it's certainly possible because the FDA is, well, not to get very political, but Big Pet Food, AFCO, FDA, well, they share a bed. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. They obviously don't want these raw, smaller, of course, raw pet food companies taking any more market share than they already have. Um, the myth of HPP denaturing enzymes, I, you know, great. I'm, I'm thrilled with that finding. I think we can move on to oxidizing fats. You know, as long as the HP, the, you know, the, the process that these raw food manufacturers are uh, undergoing meets the requirements of this Science Direct article, meaning that it is less than 20 minutes and temperatures of under 75 degrees, which according to, um, you know, the information provided by Green Juju, it is, it is actually only two minutes in a much lower water temperature, then it sounds like we're doing good there as well. So I shared this with you, one, to share it with you, to give you the information, but also to say we can learn and grow. And something we previously knew is correct may not always be correct when we find out we have more like actual data to go by. And I was wrong. And I am happy telling you that I was wrong. Um, because not because I was wrong, but because I, I pride myself on being able to take in new information and change my beliefs if necessary, if warranted. And I think that, that, that is something a lot of people are lacking. And I'm not saying you, I'm just saying people in general. You can probably think, you know, you probably have someone um, or many someones off the top of your head that you're already like, yeah, I know. <laughs> like people can be really, really stubborn. And uh, so I wanted to bring you this in. So I, I'm not covering up the fact that I was wrong. I'm telling you I was wrong. Um, now that I have the data to tell me that, hey, guess what? What we previously thought is not actually the case. And yeah, so with that, I, I that's really basically it <laughs> for today's episode. I hope this helps you. I hope this brings new light, new information. I hope that you can take this experience of me sharing how, guess what, guys, I was wrong and here's why, um, to kind of to heart to where, you know, it helps you maybe open up a little bit more, not even necessarily with your pets and pet food, though certainly in that regard, but to any and everything in life, because we don't ever want to shut ourselves out of growth and opportunity. And 
yeah, I don't want to get too emotional and too, too, uh, cheesy and emotional. I I don't like that. So (laughs) I'm going to go ahead and end today's episode. Again, check the show notes for the links to the Facebook post that Green Juju put up, as well as the Facebook video and the YouTube video, uh, of Billy and Kelly from Green Juju presenting this information to the world. So please, you know, reach out on social media if you have any comments or questions or just say, hey, Jessica, thanks for being so vulnerable. I appreciate it because, you know, being on social media is hard (laughs) and putting vulnerability out in the world is hard. Um, So uh, let's all keep building each other up, giving, giving each other grace because it is going to take some time for people to uh, get this new information and then to accept new information. And yeah, so just be the best pet parent you can be with the information you have at the time and keep learning, my friends. With that, give your pets some extra love from me. Until next week. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos in my online dog training, The Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, oh, oh.